Hello and welcome to the Reef Dork Extra channel. And today I'm going to be showing you around the brand new Reef Factory Smart Roller S. Now this is S, which means it's small. There are three sizes, small, medium, and large. And this will be going in my 40 gallon, 150 liter water box tank. So today I'm gonna to show you around it, give you my initial impressions, get it installed on the tank, and then I'll run through all the features and how it's performed in the first couple of weeks of ownership. Now I should say that this was given to me for free by Reef Factory, so a big thank you to them. And with that being said, let's get stuck in. So straight off the bat then, let's have a look at my initial impressions. Well, it's a very small unit, as the name suggests, and it's very slim line, which means it's probably gonna fit nicely in your filter sock section of your existing sump. It feels nicely put together. It's quite a solid acrylic, quite thick stuff it's made of, so it feels really nice. Uh, it also has a little media basket at the bottom that you can pull out, and in that you can put uh, activated carbon, phosphate removing media, all that sort of thing. Uh, and the other feature about the actual unit itself is it has a central column. Now this is the, uh, the part that uh, the water comes in and goes out of through the system. And on all of the filter rollers I've had, this is the one part that clogs the most. So the fact that you can just whip it out, spray it under a tap and clean it, any algae or whatever, any snails that clog in there is really good news. Now this is how it comes out of the box, almost completely built. You just need to add on a couple of things like the motor and a couple of other little bits. I've already done that, it took about 10 minutes and I've just taken it back apart for this. So what I'm gonna do now is put it all together, then I'll show you the install process. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how I installed it and then I'm gonna tell you the way you should install it because I didn't do this well. And if I was gonna do it again, I would change things. So. For a start, I have the media basket so it can pull out there, which is the right way, because you don't want it facing against the glass, otherwise you can't use it. Uh, and this is just about hanging off the edge of the, uh, the glass sump there. The water level, it does say the water level, which is that bit there, and that is the water level of the sump. So that's how deep the, uh, the, the, the roller needs to sit. So the water level in the sump needs to be in line with the thing that says water level on the outside of the roller. And because I use the, the hanging clips, you can adjust these in height so you can make it higher or lower. I use the hanging clips instead of the feet, but if you want to turn these upside down, you can have it as feet so it's freestanding on your sump. But as you can see, I have all sorts of live rock, so it's better for me to have it hanging. In terms of the plumbing then, now I wanted two things. Firstly, I decided that this is the stock connector, okay, so it's 90 degrees, so it comes out, the water comes in here and then out of that bit into the, uh, into the filter roller. And you can either have it, obviously, basically any way you want. And I decided I didn't want that. I decided I want it to be a straight connector instead of an up a 90 degree elbow. So I designed a 3D printed one, <laughs> which is that thing there. So that comes straight out instead of going off an angle, uh, but actually, this is much, much better, and I wouldn't recommend you do it the way I did. The reason I did that was because I didn't think that this would line up quite with my downpipe. This is my downpipe that brings water from the aquarium to the sump, and I didn't think they'd quite line up in the right way, so I decided I wanted a bit of flexible pump, uh, flexible hosing, sorry, which is that black bit there, and the idea was that it would bend a little bit and then it doesn't matter if the pipe isn't quite lined up because there's a bit of flexibility. I also wanted to install a union, which I did there, that's that gray thing. And that means that I can just unscrew that really easily and remove the unit. However, that tiny little bit of black flexible hosing there uh, didn't really do an awful lot for flexing at all. There's another union on the other end. It's massive overkill and this is overly complicated. Uh, and because I didn't measure it properly, that means that this isn't quite sitting. That should sit on the, uh, on the edge of the sump, of course, and it actually sits a little bit high. I've got a little bit of plastic back there that it sits on the edge of. But as I say, there is a much better way of doing it with the stock plumbing fitting that is much easier, better, and neater. So I'm gonna jump away and quickly show you how to do that. Okay, so now I've showed you how not to do it, I'm gonna show you how you should do it. You will need two 90 degree angle connectors, two 90 degree elbows, and a load of 32 millimeter pipe, and that is it. So here's the white bit over here, which is the stock connector. That's the bit that goes into uh, the filter roller. This black section here and this black section here are the 90 degree elbows that you'll need. And you just need that, that's it. A couple of bits of tubing, measure it up. This bit over here, this is your downpipe. So that's where the water comes down from your aquarium into your sump. And the beauty of this is, if it doesn't line up exactly straight, so if your smart roller doesn't line up exactly straight with 
your uh, your downpipe, you can just angle it. So let me show you that. You can twist that like that. And because of these 90 degree elbows, because of the way they uh, the way they work, and because they're pointing up, because this one is pointing upwards, uh, that is it. They'll just twist around like that. So you can set it to any angle you want, nice and easily. That will also be really nice and clean. It'll look much neater. You just need to spend a little bit of time measuring it out, making sure you're getting the right length. Now I do want to talk through a couple of issues I had when I set it up. Because my tank is very low bio load, I couldn't get the motor to turn and it was almost like the thing was turned off. That lasted about a week or so. I kept fiddling around, changing things, adjusting the height of the uh, the water level sensor, all these sorts of things. And actually what I realized in the end was I just needed to leave it, let it do its thing. The fleece then clogs up. It's a 50 micron fleece, which isn't very fine. So it might take a little bit of time. The fleece then clogs up and when it did, it started rolling. Now, because I want the water to be polished more often, I decided to turn my return pumps up. This is rated for up to 5,000 liters per hour. I have two 2,000 liter per hour return pumps running at about 75%. So when you do the maths, factoring in the fact that it loses about half the power due to head height, I'm running about 1,500 liters per hour through this unit and it can cope perfectly fine. And actually I found it better now I've turned the return pumps up a little bit because it turns more frequently. So the dirty roll isn't just sitting in the water for as long as it was before. And also you can adjust the amount of roll that advances when the sensor is triggered. So I've got it set to its maximum. So 15 centimeters, which is six inches of the roll will move along every time the sensor is triggered. Now I've owned four different filter rollers over the years and set up on all of them has been roughly the same level of difficulty, i.e. pretty easy. You shouldn't be put off by plumbing, it's really easy. You just need to measure and cut and then line it all up. And it took me a few hours to get it all sorted, but all you really need to do is set aside a bit of time and it will be nice and easy. Before I come on and tell you the five good things I like about this and the five bad things I don't like, I wanna talk you through the roll change process. Now, because I've only used one roll, I haven't had the chance to do a proper changeover from one dirty roll completely used to a brand new one. But what I did instead was I videoed the process of installing the new roll, which is the closest simulation I can get. So I'm gonna talk you through what it looks like now in terms of how easy it is. Now, obviously the first step you'll need to do when you're changing a roll is remove the old roll. And I can't show you that because I've only just got this and I've only had it for a few weeks. But what I can do is show you the rest of the process. So the first thing you need to do is remove the central basket. It does fit out past the motor, but it is a little bit of a tight squeeze. So you've got to give it a bit of a jemmy. You then put the basket out of the way. It can go in the water, so that's totally fine. And you get the new roll ready. There's a little spindle that the new roll sits on. And I put that out of the way for now, just to make it a bit easier. You then thread the new roll through the unit and just drape it over the top and rest the roll out of the way. Then you need to take the central basket and push it down into the main unit over the top of the fleece roll. And then once you've done that, you need to attach the end of the new roll to the motor. Now there's no gripping mechanism on the spindle for the motor, so I just use a bit of sellotape and I have found that just a small piece like this does a perfectly good job and you don't need to absolutely smother it. The spindle will then click into place, so you just need to turn it until it slots in. You then need to make sure the central basket is pushed right down and it goes all the way in there. And then you just put the new roll in place on the spindle and you're pretty much done. Now the full unedited version of that clip was just two minutes long, so it looks like the roll change process will be pretty slick, but I'll come back and make a separate video showing you exactly how it goes when I've used my first roll up. Now before I wrap up, I want to tell you the five things I did like and the five things I didn't like. The first thing I didn't like was the length of the power cable. It's four feet long or 1.2 meters, which actually is totally fine on my install, but it doesn't give you that flexibility if some of your plugs are further away. So I would have liked to see a slightly longer power cable. The second thing I didn't like was the screws to hold in place the center basket. Now it comes with two thumb screws that you're supposed to screw in either side to hold the center basket in place. But because they're thumb screws, they can be a little bit stiff. So if you've screwed them all the way in, taking them out when it comes time to change the roll can be a little bit of a faff. Now actually I've been running this with just one of the screws halfway in 
and that is totally fine, it works perfectly, and that will make it much easier to unscrew when it comes time to change the roll, so that's what I'm gonna be doing. The third thing I didn't like was that there is no union on the plumbing connector. If you have a union, you can just turn the screw and then remove the thread without having to disconnect all the plumbing. Now you can install a union yourself, they're really easy and they only cost a few pounds, but it would have been nice to see it included as part of the design, so it's one less thing to think about on the install. The fourth thing I didn't like is that it's not quite as flexible as it could be, in that you can only put the inlet on one side, not both sides, so you can't have the unit facing whatever way you want, and of course the media basket has to come out one way, so if you install it the other way around, you won't be able to access the media basket. Now that's a small point, and actually on most sumps it will probably be the perfect orientation, but it is worth spending a little bit of time thinking about how it would install in your sump and how everything would line up. And the final thing I don't like about it is the price. Now it's £300 in the UK, which to be fair does put it at pretty much the same price bracket as all of its competitors in the premium filter roller market. So this isn't really a gripe with the smart roller itself, it's more a gripe with the fact that filter rollers are quite expensive for what you get. But of course it's not all bad, so let's take a look at the five things I did like. Now first off is the noise level. Now it's not completely silent and you will be able to hear it outside of the cabinet, but it's not really noisy, so it's not intrusive, so it's not going to interrupt your evening watching the TV. The second thing I like about it is the fleece roll they've chosen. Now Refactory told me it's a 50 micron roll, which means that it should last plenty of time. On my tank it's looking like it's gonna last about four months, but it will still do its job of pulling out all the crap, polishing your water, and removing any uneaten food, which is exactly what you want from a filter roller. I also really like the app integration. Now for me, the Refactory app is hands down the best app on the market, for aquarium products. It's so easy to use and they have a load of good features in almost all of their equipment. And on this, I like that I can set how much roll it turns every time the sensor is triggered. And I also like that I can set a delay point so when the sensor is triggered, it waits for the amount of time I want before advancing the roll. Now the reason that's handy is because if I turn my return pump onto feed mode for 10 minutes, the water level in the sump will rise, which would trigger the water level sensor and turn the mat when it doesn't need to be turned. So I've simply set mine up for a 15 minute delay, so when my return pumps go off for 10 minutes on feed mode, it won't falsely trigger the motor to turn. And the final two things I like about it are the things I like most about it. First is the fact that you can remove the central column. Now that does two things. Firstly, it looks like it will make the roll changing process pretty easy, because you can just whip it out, whip out the old roll, and chuck in the new one. But also, as I said at the start, that inlet tube is the one part of any filter roller, no matter who makes it, that is more likely to clog. So you might get algae building up down there, you might get bubble algae there, you might have snails spawn and get loads of baby snails clogging up the inlet. But because you can just whip out the center column, tap it in the sink and run it under the tap, it's super easy to clean, which means you shouldn't ever have problems with it clogging. And the final thing I like about it is the slim size. Now I of course have the S which is the smallest, but all three units are the same width, and mine actually fits almost exactly in line with the size of my filter sock section in my sump. Now space is at a premium in any sump, and particularly in a small sump like this, so I absolutely love having more space which makes access into the sump much easier, and also gives me more options to put in other filters like a phosphate reactor or a skimmer if I need to. And so to the $64 million question, would I buy one of these if I hadn't been given it for free? And the answer to that is absolutely yes. It doesn't quite have some of the sophisticated design cues that the Red Sea Reef Mat does, but it has a fantastic app integration which is really useful, and crucially, it is absolutely tiny by comparison. Now that of course makes a huge difference in a sump like mine where space is at a premium, but frankly space is at a premium in any sump, so I really appreciate the small size. Now if you've got any questions or if there's anything I've missed, let me know in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed the video, give me a thumbs up and subscribe for next time. And until then, happy reefing.